दोस्तों मैं रोहित कुमार एबनीशो की ओर से आपका स्वागत करता हूं नाउ टुडे आई विल स्टार्ट विथ यू द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लॉ गिवन बाय एच एल ए हार्ट हर्बर्ट लायोनल अडोल्फस हार्ट हर्बर्ट लायोनल अडोल्फस हार्ट सो विल डिस्कस हिज कंट्रीब्यूशन टू द स्कूल ऑफ एनालिटिकल पॉजिटिविज्म एज आई टोल्ड यू His name was Herbert Lionel Adolphus Hart. He was born in 1907. He practiced law at the Chancery Bar, and after that, he worked as a professor of jurisprudence in Oxford University during 1952 to 1968. After that, he joined as a principal of Brasnose College, that is also in the Oxford University. And uh, without talking much about him, we will talk about his concept of law. he rejected austin's theory of analytical positivism and he expounded his own legal thoughts his own legal theory which is based on the relationship between law and society if you remember jeremy bentham john austin and even kelson kelson we have not discussed with you as yet all of them rejected the relationship between law and society and hle hart through his concept of law try to reestablish that relationship between law and society because that is a condition precedent for any legal system to function hla hart favored again the analytical approach to law for a better understanding of it he also said that analytical approach will be better approach to understand law although he also tried to establish relationship between law and society thus hla hart's notion of law is altogether different from his predecessors like jeremy bentham john austin because hla hart believed that law coercion coercion matlab zabardasti se kanun ko ya kisi rule ko follow karwana law coercion and morality these are related social phenomena having sociological implications that was a belief of hla hart let me tell you about his classic work his classic work was concept of law this book was written in criticism against john austin's theory of analytical positivism now we will discuss his theory in detail the concept of law which was given by hla hart according to hla hart law is a system of two types of rules now you need to listen this very carefully law is a system of two types of rules and the union of these two types of rules provides key to the science of jurisprudence two type ke rule hote hain और कॉम्बिनेशन ये दो टाइप्स के रूल्स का मिला के एक जुरिस्पुरस को बनाता है सो दीज रूल्स ही टर्म्ड एज प्राइमरी रूल्स एंड सेकेंडरी रूल्स ये दो टाइप्स के रूल्स कौन से हैं? प्राइमरी रूल्स एंड सेकेंडरी रूल्स सो ही रिजेक्टेड ऑस्टन ओपिनियन दैट लॉ इज अ कमांड ऑफ अ सॉवरन ही सेट दैट लॉ इज अ यूनियन ऑफ टू टाइप्स ऑफ रूल्स प्राइमरी रूल्स एंड सेकेंडरी so hla hart emphasized that primary rules are duty imposing rules please understand primary rules are duty imposing rules on whom these duties are imposed these duties are imposed on individuals these duties are imposed on society we'll discuss that in detail while when we come to the secondary rules secondary rules actually confer power kis pe kisko power confer ki jati hai to the rule making authority to the law making authority they may be legislatures or they may be legislatures and executive together and union of these two types of rule is the essence of law or these two types of rules when combined together make a jurisprudence and that is what we study under the province of jurisprudence now let us talk about primary rule in detail these primary rules which impose duties upon individuals or duties upon societies are initially binding because of popular acceptance kisi sovereign ke command se nahi bind hote hain they are binding because of the popular acceptance in the initial stage because in the in the initial stage there was no state so how they are binding in the initial stage because of the popular acceptance कौन कौन से होते हैं पॉपुलर एक्सेप्टेंस फर्स्ट रूल ऑफ किनशिप कैन समबडी एक्सप्लेन मी व्हाट इज अ मीनिंग ऑफ दिस वर्ड किनशिप के आई एन एस एच आई पी रूल ऑफ किनशिप व्हाट इज रूल ऑफ किनशिप बिकॉज़ प्राइमरी रूल्स आर इनिशियली बाइंडिंग इन द फर्स्ट फेज बिकॉज़ ऑफ द पॉपुलर एक्सेप्टेंस एंड पॉपुलर एक्सेप्टेंस द फर्स्ट थिंग इज रूल ऑफ किनशिप व्हाट इज पॉपुलर एक्सेप्टेंस कौन सा रूल होता है पॉपुलर एक्सेप्टेंस का पहला रूल है किनशिप रिलेशंस 
क्या होता है ये फैमिली मेंबर्स और क्या ब्लड रिलेशनशिप्स या ब्लड रिलेशन्स या क्या सो दिस प्राइमरी रूल्स आर बाइंडिंग बिकॉज ऑफ द पॉपुलर एक्सेप्टेंस सच एस किनशिप सच एस फैमिली सेंटिमेंट्स एक्सेट्रा बट इन द इनिशियल स्टेज दीज रूल्स आर अनऑफिशियल इन नेट ये रूल्स अनऑफिशियल है क्यों अनऑफिशियल है कौन गवर्न कर रहा है इन रूल्स को कस्टम कस्टम गवर्न करेगा ना एक्सेप्टेंस है क्योंकि किनशिप रिलेशनशिप है फैमिली सेंटिमेंट्स है इसलिए लोग इसको फॉलो कर रहे हैं और गवर्न क्या कर रहा है कस्टम गवर्न कर रहा है एंड देयर फॉर दीज रूल्स आर अनऑफिशियल रूल्स एंड सिंस दीज रूल्स आर अनऑफिशियल रूल्स these rules suffer from three major defects now which are these three major defects first uncertainty these rules are uncertain why these are uncertain because unofficial hai usko modify karne ke liye change karne ke liye amend karne ke liye aapke paas koi authority nahi hai so <coughs> these are uncertain they keep changing from place to place so first defect is that these rules are uncertain second these rules are static in character static hai kyunki rules official hai hi nahi unofficial hai change karne ke liye koi authority nahi hai to static hi rahenge change karna hi nahi paise possible hoga nahi and third inefficiency kyunki koi authority hai hi nahi unke binding effect ko dekhne ke liye to they will not be efficient they will not function in an efficient manner besides these there is no agency for deciding about these rules ye to maine pehle hi bata diya koi agency hai hi nahi decide karne ke liye now when state comes into being secondary rules are created secondary rules kya hai power in the hands of rule making authority power in the hands of legislature or executive or now these rules are power conferring rules secondary rules are power con- conferring rules and these enable the legislatures to modify their policies according to the needs of the society what will legislatures do they will modify their policies according to the needs of the society so that these rules can be changed these rules can be modified these rules can be amended as per the needs of the society otherwise there will be the defects in these rules such as the rules will be unofficial they will be inefficient they will be static in character they will not function well right in fact these legislatures or these rule making authority seek to remedy the defects of the primary rules kon kon se defects bataye the maine teen bataye the these rules are uncertain these rules are static in character and these rules are inefficient in nature so these are the defects of the primary rules and secondary rules are created that means the state authority is created to remedy the defects of these primary rules and it is out of the union of these two types of rules the law takes its birth so where do you find the origin of law according to uh, according to the chile hart theory law the origin dates from the union of two types of rules rules that is primary and secondary rules now there is a jurist he makes out a distinction between primary and secondary rules his name is eric colvin and he observes that under the primary rules individuals are required to do or abstain from doing certain acts primary rules mein kya hai individuals are required to do or abstain from doing certain acts whether they wish to do so or not say for example you shall not injure another person on the road whether th- this is act or uh, abstention abstention so not to injure a person on the road is an abstention similarly you shall follow traffic rule this is a positive act that the rule primary rule wants from you wants from the society wants from the individuals let us come to the secondary rules now secondary rules are in fact in a sense dependent on the primary rules because they provide that human beings may by doing or saying certain things introduce new rules of primary types so secondary rules what they do they introduce new rules of primary types they can extinguish the primary rules or they can even determine their incidence or control of their operation ki primary rule ko kaise control kiya jaye उसके ऑपरेशन को कैसे कंट्रोल किया जाए ये कौन डिटरमाइन करेगा अंडर सेकेंडरी रूल्स लेजिस्लेचर्स फिल डिटरमाइन दस द प्राइमरी रूल्स विच इम्पोज ड्यूटीज आर कंसर्न विद द एक्शंस 
which involve physical movement of the people or certain changes on the part of the people whereas the secondary rules which can confer public or private powers these secondary rules provide for operations which lead to creation or variation of the duties under primary rules which seek to create or vary the obligations under primary rules any question on primary and secondary rules if you have any question do let me know i pause here for couple of minutes then i'll explain you the concept of rule of recognition can we consider as well uh, that supreme court uh, play a role of uh, uh, secondary rule making body please understand that the judiciary is always a part of the government it is a uh, it is one of the organs of the government so yes uh, the courts come within that embargo of secondary rules Now let us discuss rule of recognition. अब rule of recognition को आप थोड़ा सा इस तरीके से लेंगे जैसे ऑस्टन की थ्योरी में लॉ को बाइंडिंग इफेक्ट कहा से आता है ऑस्टन की थ्योरी में सैंक्शन के थ्रू से सैंक्शन के थ्रू लेकिन कौन इम्पोज करता है सैंक्शन सोवरेन सॉवरेन यस तो बाइंडिंग इफेक्ट कम्स फ्रॉम द सॉवरेन अंडर द केल्सनाइट थ्योरी दैट इज प्योर थ्योरी ऑफ लॉ बाइंडिंग इफेक्ट टू लॉ कम्स फ्रॉम ग्रंड नॉम Similarly, in Echelle Hart's theory, there is something called rule of recognition, and rule of recognition provides binding effect to the law. Echelle Hart's positivism explains the existence of law with the reference to the rule of recognition, and the binding force of this depends upon its acceptance. That means, once the primary rule is accepted according to the rule of recognition, it is law. Now. the validity of law is to be tested on the basis of rule of recognition which is similar to john austin's conce- conception of sovereign to so, yahan pe agar aapko india mein kisi law ki validity ko test karna hai how will you test the validity of law in india according to other, other words how the court tests the validity of any law which is challenged before the court on the basis of constitution on the basis of constitution so constitution will be what here it will be a rule of recognition so, right halaki india mein constitution ke paas sovereignty nahi hai lekin rule of recognition zarur hai constitution however h l a hart insists that the rule of recognition is not an extra jural hypothesis like kelsen's बेसिक नॉर्म और ग्रंड नॉम तो जैसे कि कैल्सन का बेसिक नॉर्म है ग्रंड नॉम मैंने आपको अभी तक वो पढ़ाया नहीं रूल ऑफ रिकग्निशन कोई बाहर की चीज नहीं है इट इज नॉट एन एक्स्ट्रा लीगल हाइपोथिस इट इज अ थिंग विच इज विद इन द लीगल सिस्टम इट तो हमारे यहाँ पे कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इज अ रूल ऑफ रिकग्निशन अकॉर्डिंग टू एच एल ए हार्ट रूल ऑफ रिकग्निशन इज द ओनली रूल इन अगल सिस्टम बाइंडिंग फोर्स डिपेंड्स अपॉन इट्स एक्सेप्टेंस वंस द कोर्ट एक्सेप्ट एनी लॉ which which is valid as per the constitution it becomes a rule of recognition an example which uh, hla hart gives is whatever enacted by british queen or british crown in parliament is rule of recognition so jo bhi hamare president of india ne sign kar diya as per the constitution it is rule of recognition again various constitutional laws which constitute rule of recognition are rules of positive law which are binding on citizens they are binding on officials they are binding on legislatures they are binding on courts and they are also binding on various governmental agencies so we can see that binding effect of law depends upon the rule of recognition and rule of recognition could be anything like constitution or a crown now i'll stop it here if you have any question you can ask me otherwise i'll move forward सर रूल ऑफ रिकग्निशन में हम जनरल विल की थ्योरी को कंसीडर uh, कर सकते हैं क्या समझने के लिए uh, लेकिन देखिए जनरल विल की जो थ्योरी है उसको भी वैलिड होना पड़ेगा आई I मीन mean, जो भी लोगों की एक जनरल विल है uh-huh. उसको वैलिड होना पड़ेगा कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन उसके अकॉर्डिंग जो भी रूल बन रहा है जनरल विल के अकॉर्डिंग दैट हैज टू बी वैलिड एज पर द रूल ऑफ रिकग्निशन लाइक अकॉर्डिंग टू द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इन अवर कंट्री अकॉर्डिंग टू द पार्लियामेंट्री सुप्रीमेसी इन सम अदर कंट्री बिकॉज पार्लियामेंट कुड ऑल्सो बी रूल ऑफ रिकग्निशन मोरलिटी को इन्होंने कम्प्लीटली डिस्कार्ड नहीं किया 
बट एक बात याद रखिए जब पूरा पूरे थ्योरी का जो जिस्ट है वो ऑस्टन और किल्सन की तरह ही एक बाइंडिंग इफेक्ट पे जाके रुक जाता है सॉवरन या ग्रंथम की तरह ही बन जाता है रूल ऑफ रिकोगशन देन कहीं ना कहीं पूरा कॉन्सेप्ट बाद में जाके मोरलिटी को डिस्कार्ड कर ही देता है तो लेटेस्ट डिस्कस वॉट आर एच एल ए हार्ट व्यू ऑन लॉ एंड मोरलिटी सो एच एल ए हार्ट डज नॉट डिनाउंस द रोल ऑफ नेचुरल लॉ इन हिस्स पॉजिटिविज्म कम्प्लीटली उसको खत्म नहीं करते हैं नेचुरल लॉ को कम्प्लीटली खत्म नहीं करते हैं एच एल ए हार्ट अनलाइक जॉन ऑस्टन एंड केल्सन एच एल ए हार्ट आर्ग्यूज दैट इट इज नेसेसरी फॉर लॉ एंड मोरलिटी टू हैव सर्टन एलिमेंट ऑफ नेचुरल लॉ एज अ लॉजिकल नेसेसिटी लॉ में नेचुरल लॉ का होना मोरलिटी का होना एक लॉजिकल नेसेसिटी है ऐसा मानना है एच एल ए हार्ट का दस मोरलिटी इज इम्प्लाइड इन एच एल ए हार्ट पॉजिटिव लॉ मोरलिटी इज एम्प्लाइड इन इज पॉजिटिव लॉ एंड वॉट इज पॉजिटिव लॉ यूनियन ऑफ प्राइमरी एंड सेकेंडरी रूल्स एज अ मेंबर ऑफ सोसाइटी इंडिविजुअल्स एक्चुअली फील मॉरली बाउंड टू बाइड बाय दीज प्राइमरी रूल्स बोथ एज अ मैटर ऑफ ड्यूटी एंड एज एन ऑब्लिगेशन तो लोग लॉ को फॉलो क्यों करते हैं बिकॉज दे फील मॉरली बाउंड टू अबाइड बाय लॉ पीपल वॉन्ट टू बी लॉ अबाइडिंग पीपल दे डोंट वॉन्ट टू बी लॉ ब्रेकर्स राइट यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड दिस सो नॉट बिकॉज द पीपल से दैट लॉ इज समथिंग विच इज कमांड ऑफ द सॉवरन एंड लेट्स फॉलो इट It is not like that. People feel morally bound to abide by law because they live in a civilized country. If they live in a civilized country, they will feel morally bound to abide by law. It is not because law is command of the sovereign and uh, they have a fear of sanction. They they don't uh, abide by law because of that. So this is how he criticizes John Austin's theory. H. L. Hart therefore asserts that law and morality are complementary and supplementary to each other. Law and morality they are. complementary and supplementary to each other they are not actually opposed to each other as we we've been told by john austin kelson and jeremy bentham in hla hart's view there are four attributes of morality morality ke kitne attributes hai char attributes hai first hai importance morality is a very important thing in law secondly immunity from deliberate change you cannot deliberately change the moral precepts you cannot del- deliberately change the moral concepts that means if there is a moral opinion that you should not kill an animal on the street you should not kill stray dog that is a moral concept can you go on the street and kill uh, animals and then justify it no because the morality is immune from deliberate change third voluntary character of moral offenses man commits moral offenses like sexual offenses which simply because they voluntarily want to commit that so they willfully do that it's not that they they feel that it is morally correct so there is a voluntary character of moral offenses and fourth one forms of moral pressure which separated from etiquettes custom and other social rules there is some moral pressure on the people why they follow the law and more when we talk about moral pressure it is different from etiquette custom and other social rules take the example of slavery slavery is abandoned today not merely because of the civil war between south and north usa but it it, it was banned because there was a moral pressure on the society that this is not a righteous practice okay bonded labor we we are banned bonded labor not merely because legisl- legislation says so but there is a moral pressure to ban it the rules of sexual behavior also provides the very good example of morality ye maine aapko pehle hi bata diya actually uh, hart observes that balance has to be drawn between the freedom of individuals to have individual and artistic freedom and the duty of the law to protect society from depravity and corruption actually hart accepted that morality is a necessary condition of society to morality kya hai wo ek necessary necessary condition hai society ki aur usko aap law se alag nahi kar sakte and law has a function to ensure that morality of society does not disintegrate law ka kya kaam hai to ensure that society ki jo morality hai na wo disintegrate nahi karti but he further adds that the function of law is only the last line of defense that means morality kitni bhi zaruri hai law law mein morality kitni bhi necessity ho ek legal concept mein morality ka kitna bhi bada role ho legal concept mein 
लेकिन आप कोर्ट के थ्रू मोरालिटी को इन्फोर्स नहीं कर सकते दैट इज अ लास्ट लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस एंड दैट इज दैट इज हाउ ही डिस्कार्ड मोरलिटी फ्रॉम लॉ इज दैट बिफोर कमिंग टू द कोर्ट अदर अटेम्प्ट टू प्रिजर्व द एक्सेप्टेड मोरलिटी शुड कम From within the society itself, so morality को preserve करने के जो उपाय होने चाहिए that should come from the society itself. How it will come through the society? Through education, through the mass media, etc. Anything? Any question on law and morality of H L A Hart? Sir, sometimes uh, morality enforced by uh, by law by the law. No, no, that is true. Morality sometimes is enforced by law, but H L A Hart is saying that it is very difficult to enforce morality by law. And if you want to enforce morality from law, that is a last resort. You should not, on the first place, try to preserve morality through law. Any other question? H L A Hart's theory. And uh, now I will be doing with you criticism against H L A Hart's theory. There are two criticism against. his theory so i'll discuss that with you in the meantime if you have any question you can ask so just like all the theories hla hart's concept of law has also been vehemently criticized by some of the jurists and a uh, couple of names i want to take here first is ronald dworkin ronald dworkin r o n a l d t w o r k i n he is a modern naturalist he belongs to the modern natural law philosophy and another is lon l fuller lon l fuller jinka ek fiction bhi hai aapke case material mein case of the spilancian explorers ye aapko padhna hai ispe bhi acha khasa question aata hai aapko so you have to read that so we'll discuss these two criticisms first is of ronald dworkin and another one is lon fuller we'll start with ronald dworkin and ronald dworkin completely rejects hla hart's view of law as a union of primary and secondary rules he says that law cannot be merely a union of primary and secondary rules because if the law is a union of primary and secondary rules you tend to exclude morality from law ultimately aap morality ko law se alag kar hi doge and that is what he did when he expressed his views about law and morality he said that you cannot enforce morality through the court of law other attempts to preserve morality in the society should happen like education and mass media so ultimately he denounces law from morality and that is what is criticized by ronald dworkin in order to criticize h l a hart's theory ronald dworkin draws a distinction between rules and principles actually hart ne kaha na law is a union of primary and secondary rules to dwakin kehte hain no there is a distinction between rule and principles rules or principles mein difference hota hai and he points out that a legal system cannot be conceived merely as an aggregate of rules यूनियन सिस्टम सिर्फ रूल से नहीं बनता है प्राइमरी एंड सेकेंडरी रूल से आपने एक लीगल सिस्टम बना दिया नहीं ऐसा नहीं होता है सो लीगल सिस्टम हैज टू बी बेस्ड नॉट ओनली ऑन द रूल्स बट ऑन सर्टन सॉलिड प्रिंसिपल्स एंड पॉलिसीज रूल्स को किस चीज पे बेस्ड होना पड़ेगा सॉलिड प्रिंसिपल्स एंड पॉलिसीज ठीक है आपने प्राइमरी एंड सेकेंडरी रूल्स का लीगल सिस्टम तो बना दिया लेकिन जो रूल्स हैं प्राइमरी रूल्स जो हैं उनको प्रिंसिपल्स और पॉलिसीज पे बेस्ड होना चाहिए इफ दे आर नॉट बेस्ड ऑन प्रिंसिपल्स एंड पॉलिसीज दे विल क्रिएट कंफ्यूजन दे विल क्रिएट क्योस दीज प्रिंसिपल्स आर ब्रॉड फॉर्मुलेशन ऑफ जनरलाइजेशन तो ये प्रिंसिपल्स क्या है ब्रॉड फॉर्मुलेशन ऑफ जनरलाइजेशन वेर एज रूल्स आर डिटेल्ड प्रिसेप्ट हैविंग डिस्टिंग एंड डेफिनेट इफेक्ट तो रूल्स का एक डेफिनेट इफेक्ट होता है लेकिन प्रिंसिपल्स का डेफिनेट इफेक्ट नहीं होता है वो ब्रॉड फॉर्मुलेशन होते हैं रूल्स आर मोर स्पेसिफिक इन नेचर बट प्रिंसिपल्स आर नॉट रूल्स क्या होते हैं स्पेसिफिक होते हैं बिल्कुल क्लियर फॉर्म में बनाए जाते हैं रूल्स बट प्रिंसिपल्स आर ब्रॉड फॉर्मुलेशन ऑफ सर्टन पॉलिसीज रूनल्ड वर्क इन फर्दर ऑब्जर्व दैट प्रिंसिपल इज अ स्टैंडर्ड दैट इज टू बी ऑब्जर्व प्रिंसिपल एक ऐसा स्टैंडर्ड होता है 
that should be observed because it is a requirement of justice no principles ko follow karna padega kyu principle ko follow karna chahiye because that is a requirement of justice justice kisi rule se nahi aata hai justice aata hai principle se it is a we should follow principle because it is a requirement of fairness it is a requirement of some other dimension of morality agar aap principles pe legal system khate hain तो आप अपने आप ही मोरालिटी को प्रिजर्व करेंगे सोसाइटी में आप फेयरनेस को और जस्टिस को प्रिजर्व करेंगे उन्होंने एग्जांपल्स भी दिए नो वन कैन टेक एडवांटेज ऑफ हिस्स ओन रॉन्ग अब नो वन कैन टेक एडवांटेज ऑफ हिस्स ओन रॉन्ग ये रूल है कि प्रिंसिपल है नो वन कैन टेक एडवांटेज ऑफ हिस्स ओन रॉन्ग विद दिस इज अ रूल और प्रिंसिपल प्रिंसिपल दिस इज अ प्रिंसिपल एंड एवरी रूल शुड बी बेस्ड ऑन दैट प्रिंसिपल no one shall be a judge in his own case this is a rule or a principle huh? principle this is a principle or usse hum kis cheez ko preserve karte hain we should preserve fairness na agar agar main apne case mein judge hu to fairness kaise rahega fir natural justice natural justice violate ho jayega wahi pe morality violate ho jayegi hai na so this is the well established principle of law that no one shall take advantage of his own wrong but rules on the other hand they are applicable in all or nothing fashion hai na either this way or that way isi tarah hota hai rule and what is a distinguishing feature between rule and morality reason whenever we follow certain principle we apply the reason but if we follow the rule we say we have to follow it as it is written in a statute right working points out that judges have the discretion of creating new legal rules when the existing rule of law is silent on a particular point or when a rule does not provide necessary guidance in a particular case to aise cases mein judges ke paas ek discretion hoti hai to create a new rule to isliye किसी भी लीगल सिस्टम को सिर्फ रूल्स पे बेस नहीं होना चाहिए बट इट शुड बी बेस्ड ऑन सर्टेन सॉलिड प्रिंसिपल्स एंड पॉलिसीज़। तो इसलिए ये जो पूरा लीगल सिस्टम क्रिएट करते हैं एक्चुअली हार्ट ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ प्राइमरी एंड सेकेंडरी रूल्स इट इज नॉट अ प्रॉपर एनालिसिस ऑफ लॉ दैट इज हाउ हिज अंडरस्टैंडिंग इज एंड ही सेज दैट दिस कैन फॉल ऑन द ग्राउंड क्योंकि इसमें मोरालिटी को आपने कहीं पर भी रिजर्व नहीं किया है that is a first criticism and now let us come to the second criticism first criticism mein aapko kuch kehna hai kya i believe that you don't want to say anything so let us go to the second criticism and this is given by lon fuller he is a modern modern naturalist as i have already told you and he has also criticized hla hart's theory which holds that there is no law other than the rule of recognition aapko agar binding effect chahiye hoga law ka to wo aapko sirf for sirf rule of recognition se milega this is the view of h l hart and that is criticized by lon l fuller lon fuller believes that legal system is an instrument to regulate human conduct legal instrument karta kya hai human conduct ko hamare conduct ko hamare act or forbearances ko regulate karta hai hamare actions ko regulate karta so legal system regulates a human conduct and therefore is it must concern itself with both law as it is and law as it ought to be so legal system should concern itself with positive law as well as natural law, law as it is and law as it ought to be in other words this means that law cannot be completely devoid of morality law morality se completely alag ho hi nahi sakta that is point that lon fuller wants to make Lon Fuller maintains that law is product of sustained purposes and efforts. It is a product of sustained purposes and efforts. Law को बनाने के लिए efforts करने पड़ते हैं. Law के purposes होते हैं. And that contains its own implicit morality. जब आप law को efforts करके बनाएंगे, purposes के लिए बनाएंगे, तो उसमें morality होगी ही होगी. He argues that laws may be of little service it will cause both injustice and misery to the people if law 
does not conform to the internal morality of it. So, law me agar internal morality nahi hai, law ke andar agar morality nahi hai, so it will cause injustice. It will cause misery to the people. And therefore, Lawn Fuller gives eight conditions which constitute the internal morality of law. So, there are eight conditions which constitute internal morality of law. I want to write these eight conditions. This is a very important thing, that's why I'm writing it. Otherwise, I don't favor writing much. So, you, you should write it down. What is the first condition which constitutes internal morality of law? First is, there must be rules. First of all, रूल्स होने चाहिए अगर रूल्स नहीं होंगे तो वो भी मॉरल नहीं है इंटरनल मोरालिटी के लिए रूल्स का होना जरूरी है दैट इज द फर्स्ट कंडीशन ऑफ इंटरनल मोरालिटी ऑफ लॉ सेकेंडली द रूल्स मस्ट बी पब्लिश्ड आपने रूल बना दिया लेकिन लोगों को वो रूल मालूम ही नहीं है इट इज नॉट एक्सेबल टू द पीपल वॉट इज अज ऑफ दैट देर फॉर रूल्स मस्ट बी पब्लिश पब्लिकेशन ऑफ अ रूल इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थर्ड वन रेट्रो एक्टिव must not be used abusively ye bada important principle hai i am again repeating it retroactive rules must not be used abusively iska kya matlab hota hai retroactive legislations kya hota hai i think se enforce karna ha back date se enforce karna kisi law ha kisi bhi law ko back date se enforce karna hota hai retroactive legislations active from the back date right ha पार्लियामेंट के पास पावर होती है रेट्रोएक्टिव लेजिस्लेशन बनाने की दैट शुड नॉट बी यूज अब्यूसिव दैट इज दर्ड प्रिंसिपल फोर्थ द रूल्स मस्ट बी अंडरस्टैंडेबल रूल बना दिया आपने पब्लिश भी कर दिया वो रेट्रोएक्टिव लेजिस्लेशन भी नहीं है लेकिन कॉम्प्लिकेटेड है उसका कोई यूज नहीं है सो रूल्स मस्ट बी अंडरस्टैंडेबल फिफ्थ पॉइंट द रूल्स मस्ट नॉट बी कॉन्ट्राडिक्टरी आपने कई सारे जब रूल्स आप बनाते हैं तो वो एक दूसरे से कॉन्ट्राडिक्ट नहीं करने चाहिए दे मस्ट बी very simple and they must be easy to understand to the people sixth the rules must not require the conduct beyond the power of the affected parties aapne rule bana diya lekin aap logon se aisa conduct demand kar rahe ho jo ki log follow nahi kar paye iska bahut acha example hai demonetization ka time every day the rules were being changed and it was very difficult for the people to follow them it required a conduct which was which was beyond the power of the people so that that was a good example of this sixth principle now seventh one the rules must not be changed so frequently that the subjects cannot guide their actions by them so demonetization ka same example aap rules ko itna frequently mat change kijiye ki log apne actions ko guide hi na kar pae log us uske according act hi na kar pae डिमोनेटाइजेशन के टाइम पे इतने बार रूल्स चेंज हो रहे थे कि इट इट बिकेम डिफिकल्ट फॉर द पीपल टू गाइड देयर एक्शंस कभी एक हफ्ते में चौबीस हजार रुपए मिल रहे हैं कभी पांच पचास हजार रुपए मैक्सिमम लोगों को मिलेगा दैट वाज वेरी डिफिकल्ट कभी कह रहे हैं एटीएम से दो हजार रुपए ही मिलेंगे कभी कह रहे हैं हफ्ते में चौबीस रुपए मिलेंगे कभी कह रहे हैं नहीं एक एक दिन में भी आप बीस हजार रुपए कर सकते हो कभी कह रहे हैं कि आप विड्रॉ कर ही नहीं सकते दैट वॉज वेरी वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू फॉलो नाउ एट वन there should be congruence between rules as announced and their actual enforcement jo rule aapne announce kiya uska enforcement bhi waisa hona chahiye usme relation hona chahiye aisa nahi hai ki aapne rule kuch announce kiya aur uska jo enforcement hai wo kisi aur tarike se aap kar rahe hain keh rahe hain kar rahe hain as a modern naturalist lawn fuller believed that law represents ऑर्डर सिंप्लीसिटर तो ये ऑर्डर सिंप्लीसिटर क्या होता है ऑर्डर सिंप्लीसिटर का मीनिंग लिख लीजिए ऑर्डर सिंप्लीसिटर मीन्स दैट गुड ऑर्डर इज लॉ दैट कॉरेस्पॉन्ड्स टू डिमांड ऑफ जस्टिस और मोरलिटी और पीपल्स नोशन ऑफ व्हाट द लॉ ऑट टू बी एंड देयर फोर व्हेन यू टॉक अबाउट लॉ बोथ लॉ एज इट इज एंड लॉ एज इट ऑट टू बी दैट इनसेपरेबल फ्रॉम ईच अदर दैट इन डिजोल्यूबली फ्यूज विद ईच अदर तो ये आपके लिए लॉन फुलर है इन इनका ये क्रिटिसिजम है अगेंस्ट इच एल इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन यू मे आस्क प्लीज रिपीट द लास्ट लाइन ओके द लास्ट लाइन इज दैट लॉन फुलर से इज देयर फॉर दैट नेचुरल लॉ एंड पॉजिटिव लॉ वो था इनसेपरेबल फ्रॉम ईच अदर दैट मीन्स लॉ एंड मोरलिटी और वॉट द लॉ इज एंड वॉट द लॉ ऑट टू बी दे आर इनसेपरेबल फ्रॉम ईच अदर 
पार्क दे आर इन डिजोल्यूबली फ्यूज विद ईच अदर ओके सर बड़ी तो नहीं थी ना क्रिटिसिज्म नो नो हम लोग उतना ही करते हैं जितना सिलेबस में उससे ज्यादा करते भी नहीं कोई मतलब ही नहीं है आप इतना ही समझ लो बहुत बड़ी बात है सर व्हाट वाज द एट कंडीशन टू कॉन्स्टिट्यूट अ इंटरनल मोरालिटी ऑफ लॉ देयर शुड बी कॉन्ग्रुएंस बिटवीन द रूल्स एज अनाउंस्ड एंड देयर एक्चुअल एनफोर्समेंट इज दैट सफिशिएंट फॉर टुडे वी हैव कंप्लीटेड एच एल हार्ट यस यस सर थैंक यू सो गुड नाइट सर गुड नाइट दोस्तों इस तरह के वीडियो को बनाने में काफी समय मेहनत और रिसोर्सेस लगता है आप अपना वेल्यूबल फीडबैक जरूर शेयर करें ताकि एबनीसियो टीम को प्रोत्साहन मिले तथा आपके द्वारा दिए गए फीडबैक पर काम करके और इन्फॉर्मेटिव वीडियोस आप तक लाया जा सके यदि आपको यह वीडियो पसंद आया हो तो प्लीज लाइक द वीडियो सब्सक्राइब द चैनल एंड शेयर दीडियो विद नीडी वन थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग वीडियो थैंक्स अलॉट